kings from Babylon to Baghdad. Mesopotamia. The Greek word for ancient Iraq means the land between the rivers, the Tigris and Euphrates. The Mesopotamian plain, part of the Fertile Crescent, was a perfect environment with abundant water for civilization to flourish. An advanced tribal culture developed in this region long before Egypt, Greece, and Rome. Tribes turned into settlements, settlements into towns. By 3500 BC, the world's very first cities, Uruk and Ur, rose in southern Mesopotamia, a region also known as Sumer. It's the place that saw the development for the first time on the planet Earth of virtually all of those social and political and technological things that we associate with civilized life. The world's earliest writing systems developed in Mesopotamia. The world's first kings. The invention of the wheel the invention of the plow, the development of the state as a way of organizing political life. By 2900 BC, the patchwork of Mesopotamia's 30 or so city-states hardly comprised a cohesive empire. Each had its own king, its own patron god or goddess, and a competing area of agricultural fields. Rival cities created alliances to bolster their own independence or to conquer their neighbors. Distances between these cities were actually quite small. And because the irrigation land was so valuable, these cities were constantly at war with one another for the smallest of advantages. By 2334 BC, one king came to dominate Mesopotamia, Sargon the Great. As far as we know, there are no images of Sargon that survive. But we can guess what he would have looked like. He would have looked, uh, at least in his portraits, the way that Mesopotamian kings tended to look, which was uh, powerful, strong. The ancient form of Sargon's name, Sharukin, means the legitimate king. A strong hint, scholars say, that he was a usurper. In a Moses-like legend about his origins, Sargon was the illegitimate son of a priestess. So she put him in a basket after he was born and floated him in the river. And the basket then was discovered by a gardener who raised him. And then he went into the service of the king of Kish. Enterprising, ambitious, and ruthless. Sargon overthrew King Zababa of Kish and declared himself the city's new ruler. He also reigned at Agade, the capital city he built north of Sumer in the state of Akkad, though its precise location is still unknown. With his Akkadian army, Sargon started to take control of southern Mesopotamia. His first conquest was the city of Uruk, where he captured and then humiliated Uruk's king, Lugalzagezi, by dragging him away on a leash. And then after he conquered Uruk, he conquered other southern Mesopotamian cities, and then he seems to have thought, for whatever reason, I can keep going. 
he wasn't content simply as the earlier Sumerian kings had been to, to fight local battles. He wanted to take over what was then the known world. Remarkably, he did just that. Over a 56-year reign, Sargon conquered North Mesopotamia, North Syria, and eventually reached the Mediterranean to capture Southeast Turkey. Sargon built the world's first empire. It's the first king in the world to decide to take over lands that were occupied by people of different nationalities, different languages, different gods. And he was somebody that Mesopotamian kings from that time onwards looked up to. He was the king that really set the ground rules for what it was to be an emperor. Sargon's empire was not only unique in scale, but also in organization. He tried to unify this vast area and reorganize it in a way that it had never been done before. Every city in Mesopotamia had its own system of weights and measures. Sargon standardized weights and measures throughout the whole area he had conquered. And by doing that, he made it possible to have um, trade over vast distances. Sargon's novel ideas weren't limited to empire building, but extended to the military as well. He was the first king who claimed to have a standing army. Drafted from all cities in the empire, it was a huge force of 5,400 men that proved expensive to maintain. So Sargon instituted a new tradition to help feed his troops. Plundering. They fed themselves, the army, uh, from the land there so that the campaigns were more or less set to go at the point when the harvest was completed throughout Mesopotamia. That is one age of terror that you don't want to live through. Being outside of Akkad and not a member of that inner elite and knowing that every year you are going to be faced with this kind of slaughter. Sargon reigned until his death in 2279 BC. His dynasty continued to rule for another 82 years. Yet, as imposing as the Akkadian Empire was, it also proved fragile. In 2197 BC, the kingdom fell to raiders from the Zagros Mountains in Persia. 